Did you know that the locations in Outlander are pretty much all real places? Or at least, inspired by real places? Let's take a worldwide tour through all the locations Claire, Jamie and the gang visited mostly in sequential order in the story. 85 locations, 237 years, 21,000 miles of travel. Right, uh, watch out for spoilers. Our story begins in Inverness, Scotland's northernmost city. Frank and Claire spend their second honeymoon at Mrs Baird's bed and breakfast. Roger's Church, Old High St Stephen's Church, is just a few streets away. The Manse is located around here and where Reverend Reginald Wakefield lived. Fiona and Ernie Buckins' house is around here just over the river. Claire travels through the stones at Craig Nadoon, likely somewhere around here in southern Inverness -shire. I thought there might be a beehive lodged in some crevice of the rock and placed a hand on the stone in order to lean into the cleft. The stone screamed. Right. Castle Leoch is home to the Mackenzie clan, led by Jamie's uncle, Colm, and situated approximately in this area. We pass Crane's Muir and Loch Ness en route to Fort William, where Jamie was flogged by Black Jack Randall. Jumping out of the story for a moment to mention the nearby Corrimony Cairn, where General Simon Fraser is buried. Lally Brock, or Brock Turok, is the fictional home of the Fraser family and likely located around here. Balregan is where Jamie lived with Leary while the two were married. Claire found Jamie imprisoned in the Wentworth prison, Jamie escapes prison, and the pair relocate to the Abbey of Saint-Anne de Beaupré, a Benedictine monastery in France. The Abbey was an enormous 12th century edifice, walled to resist both the smashing of sea storms and the onslaughts of land-based invaders. After a brief stop in La Havre, Jamie and Claire start their new life at Rue Tremelon in Paris. Claire lends her services as a nurse at L'Hôpital des Anges, possibly based on L'Hôpital Hotel Dieu. Right now, go easy on me with these French pronunciations, by the way, I'm from Scotland. Jamie Jules Randall in the Bois de Boulogne, a forest about the size of 1,600 football fields. Quick stops in Versailles, Argentan, Fontainebleau, Claire's ancestral home of Compiègne is nearby. Many years later, Jamie and Jenny will set sail for America from Brest. Now we're out of France as Jamie and Claire return to Scotland. They return to Lallybroch for almost a year before being swept up in the events of the Jacobite Rising that start to carry Arric. Here they meet Lord John Grey. Press the pans is near here. It's the site of the first major battle of the Jacobite Rising in 1745. Jamie kills Dougal at the Culloden House shortly before the Battle of Culloden. This historic event in 1746 was the final battle of the Jacobite Rising which led to mass migration of Scots to North America. Claire and her daughter find Jamie's gravestone in 1968 at St Kilda Cemetery. Beaufort Castle is home to Lord Lovat, Jamie's grandfather. Jamie lived in hiding for seven years in Dunbonnet's cave located near Lally Brock. Jamie gets captured and taken up north to Ardsmuir Prison. Ardsmuir is the carbuncle on God's bum, Colonel Harry Quarry said. Young Ian gets captured by pirates in the Silky's Isle. In Edinburgh, Jamie and Claire are reunited after 20 years in his print shop at Carfax Close. Characters frequented the World's End, Kirk of the Canongate, Holyrood Palace, Falkirk, and Arbroath. Loch Erichty Dam, a real dam, is where Jem gets taken by Rob Cameron. At Loch Ray is another dam visited by Bree. In England, we locate Mile Castle 37 of Hadrian's Wall, near where Roger encounters his father a World War II Spitfire pilot who had travelled through time. While serving his indenture, Jamie fathers William in Hellwater, located in the Lake District. Two of Lord John's favourite spots in London are Argus House, where his brother Hal lives, and the Beefsteak Club. It's time to leave England and Scotland for good. Jamie and Claire board the Artemis from Cape Wrath and set sail for the Caribbean, over 4,500 miles away. We land in Kingston, Jamaica and find Gilly's house, Rose Hall, where young Ian was held prisoner. Gilly's attempts to murder Jamie, but Claire kills her instead in a band away. Brief visits to Hacienda de la Fuente and Turks and Caicos Islands wrap up our time in the Caribbean. Time to make our way to the USA. Jamie and Claire are shipwrecked at Le Pearl on the coast of Georgia. They travel to Charleston, South Carolina, where we meet Stephen Bonnet, a notorious pirate. Now to the port of Wilmington, North Carolina, where Bree and Roger are handfast and Bree is assaulted by Stephen Bonnet. Jamie kills Major MacDonald during the Revolutionary War at the Battle of Moores Creek Bridge. Bree and Jamie meet for the first time in Cross Creek. It's known today as Fayetteville, North Carolina. 
The Fraser spent time at River Run Plantation near Cross Creek, which is owned by Jamie's aunt, Jocasta. From the screen of trees near the river, a brick walk swept up through a broad array of formal lawns and gardens, splitting in two to circle paired marble statues that stood in their own beds of flowers. Jamie and Claire settle on Fraser's Ridge in the mountains of western North Carolina. A yearly gathering of Scottish immigrants takes place at the fictional Mount Helicon, located near Grandfather Mountain. Roger is sold to the Mohawk and briefly escapes a rhododendron hill where he discovers a stone circle. Alamance Battleground, North Carolina is the site of Roger's hanging. Pass west through Beardsley's cabin and Brownsville to find the Snowbird Cherokee village where Jamie serves as Indian agent. Fergus and Marsali live for a time in Newburn, North Carolina. Claire is held prisoner at Tryon Palace, the first capital of North Carolina, and helps Governor Martin with his correspondence. Stephen Bonnet captures Brianna and plans to sell her on Ocracoke Island. William gets lost in the great dismal swamp of Virginia. The smooth surface of the water reflected the trees standing in it so perfectly that he couldn't be sure quite where he himself was, balanced precariously between two looking glass worlds. Quick visits to New York City and Unadula, New York, then to Snaketown, where, much earlier in her story, Roger was held captive and young Ian lived with the Mohawk. We're pinning the fictional Snaketown somewhere near Watertown, New York. William spends a winter in Quebec City near the Plains of Abraham. Jamie gets contracted as a militiaman and helps to defend Fort Ticonderoga, the famous landmark near the south end of Lake Champlain, New York. And he takes part in the famous revolutionary battle of Saratoga, New York and he loses a finger. Claire, Frank and Brianna live for many years in a house on Fury Street in Boston. Now to Philly, where Jamie and Claire live for a time with Fergus and his family at his print shop on Market Street. Lord John's house was at number 17 Chestnut Street where he proposed to Claire after learning of Jamie's death. Jamie and Claire reunite at Bartram's Gardens. Jamie stays at the Hardman's house while making his way to Claire. Claire gets shot and almost dies at the Monmouth battlefield. They encounter more battlefields and military encampments in Bennington, Vermont, Middlebrook, New Jersey, Valley Forge, and Coriel's Ferry. In 1980, Bree and the kids stay briefly in Redonda Beach, California, while Bree gets her affairs in order. The Frasers relocate to Savannah, Georgia, where Fergus had his print shop. William searches for his cousin Ben's wife, Amaranthus, in the nearby settlement of Saperville. Right. Before we go, let's head back down to Fraser's Ridge where we leave Jamie and Claire at the end of the latest story, written in my own heart's blood. So, where do you think the ninth installment will head? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and find out for real by listening to Diana Gabaldon's newest audiobook, Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone.